The world of fighting games has many memorable main antagonists. The likes of Street Fighter's M. Bison, Fatal Fury's Geese Howard and Mortal Kombat Shao Kahn have all captured players' imaginations through their fighting capabilities and evil deeds. Perhaps more terrifying and sinister than all others out there though is the Tekken Universe's Kazuya, who through his ability to perform a horrifying transformation essentially becomes the Devil Incarnate. In today's video we are going to take a trip back through time to not only look at this character's lore and origins, but to all of his subsequent video game appearances following his 1995 PlayStation debut. Who really is this dangerous individual and how important is his legacy today? Keeping such questions in mind, hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. This is the terrifying story of Devil Kazuya. Yeah. When the original Tekken game appeared in arcades in 1994, we would be introduced to the world of Tekken and the Iron Fist tournament for the first time. Apart from the game's stunning graphics and innovative control scheme that saw buttons mapped to each fighter's limbs, one of the standout features of the game was its interesting cast of characters to choose from. This arcade hit a track screen would even offer up an iconic pre-rendered intro that would show off roster member Kazuya's skills, instantly positioning him as an important character in the franchise. The final boss for Tekken's first arcade outing would be the now infamous Heihachi, but we would get to learn more about both of these characters when the game was ported to the Sony PlayStation a few months later. This version of the game would feature a far more impressive introductory sequence, showing off most of the title's cast. In a normal playthrough, Heihachi returns as the game's final boss, and supplementary material allows us to learn more about the Tekken world and characters. Years before the events of the game, Heihachi Mishima would carry his son Kazuya to the top of a mountain, then mercilessly throw the then five-year-old off the side of a cliff. The warped Heihachi did this to test his son's strength, and see whether he was fit to lead the Mishima Zaibatsu in the future a huge multinational financial group owned by the Mishima family. Kazuya would indeed survive, but the fall would leave a now recognisable large scar on his chest. The scar would cause a demonic entity within him known as the Devil Gene to become active, which offers him immense power and strength. Driven by the desire for revenge, Kazuya manages to climb up the cliffside determined to defeat his father. In the years between this happening and the first Tekken game, Kazuya travels the world owning his skills in martial arts competitions, eventually becoming an undefeated champion. 21 years following throwing his son off a cliff, Heihachi announces the first King of Iron Fist tournament, with the intention of testing his son's strength and worth. During the tournament, Kazuya fights against Lee, a Chinese orphan Heihachi adopted to function as a rival to Kazuya, with him later also defeating Paul Phoenix, a fighter he previously fought to a stalemate. In the final showdown against Heihachi, Kazuya is triumphant, leading to one of the most memorable scenes in fighting game history. We get to see Kazuya enact revenge by picking up his father's unconscious body, which he then tosses down the very same cliff that he was thrown off as a child. With a cheeky smile on his face, Kazuya is the owner of Mishima Zaibatsu. One of the coolest features of Tekken on the PlayStation was the sheer amount of unlockable characters that become available via clearing the game's arcade mode with different characters. But if you want to unlock Heihachi, a different method was required, where instead gamers would have to beat the arcade mode in less than 5 minutes and 30 seconds. A playthrough of Heihachi sees this final boss face off against an alternative one, Kazuya taking his intimidating devil form. However, sadly, his fighting abilities in this one do not differ from his regular form. Essentially functioning as an alternate costume for standard Kazuya, Devil Kazuya can be unlocked by completing the Galaga minigame, with only one continue. That's right, if you remember back in the day, in the original Tekken, lucky gamers got to enjoy Galaga while the main game loaded, and those who persisted could unlock the devil himself. In the next game in the series Tekken 2, the story would progress resulting in Devil Kazuya featuring much more prominently, with his abilities more fleshed out too. Set two years after the first Iron Fist, Kazuya now controls the family business, and the company is now more powerful and corrupt than ever before. Heihachi was known as being ruthless enough, whereas Kazuya appears to lack no conscience whatsoever. 
During this reign of terror, Kazuya hires assassins to take out all critics and detractors, and becomes renowned for taking part in all sorts of shady business activities. From extorting money to performing unethical experiments, if it's bad, Kazuya's company is involved. The devil gene activated within Kazuya has allowed him to become completely consumed by hatred. It has also transpired that after Kazuya threw his father off a cliff, like himself previously, his father too survived and climbed back up to look for revenge. Learning of this, Kazuya announces the King of Iron Fist Tournament 2, where he knows his father will appear, giving him a chance to finish him off for good. While all of this is unfolding, animal rights activist Jun Kazama wants Kazuya arrested for his experiments. In a bizarre twist during the tournament, rather than arresting Kazuya, Jun becomes drawn to him by a mystic force from beyond. She chooses to drop out of the tournament to find a way of freeing Kazuya from the evil power that surrounds him. At some point, Jun becomes pregnant with Kazuya's child, somewhat swaying the devil hold over him. Still, none of this is enough to stop him confronting his father and the pair doing battle once again. Here, the devil gene completely takes over his body, leading to him taking his devil form. Still, with an unborn child on the way, this internally conflicts Kazuya's emotions and weakens him in combat. His evil side is represented by the devil and his good side is represented by Angel, an entity which was brought forth after meeting June. This struggle allows Kazuya to be defeated by his father in the finals, leading Heihachi to picking up his son's unconscious body, then this time throwing him into a volcano. Leaving in a helicopter, the volcano erupts behind him with Heihachi, head of the Mishima Zaibatsu, once again. Meanwhile, Kazuya's son is bald, leading to Jun leaving everything behind to raise him. In Kazuya's and Devil's Tekken 2 ending, the Devil leaves Kazuya's body and becomes his own form. Before we progress on to covering Kazuya's story in the third Tekken, I just want to give a quick thank you to everyone who's subscribed so far. Subscribing and watching these videos means these appear in more people's feeds, and for that I cannot thank you enough. So if you're new here and want regular fighting game videos like this, click that subscribe button now. In the words of Elvis, thank you very much. Moving along to the third game in the series, Tekken 3, 15 years were passed since the second Iron Fist tournament. Heihachi has since established what is known as the Tekken Force, a paramilitary organisation dedicated to protecting him and his company. Under his authoritarian rule, ultimately this has led to world peace, but feels threatened by a malevolent creature known as Ogre. Heihachi seeks to capture Ogre and use its fighting power for his personal gain. June is now living a peaceful life, but is disrupted by sensing Ogre's presence. She advises her son Jin to seek out his grandfather Heihachi if anything were to ever go wrong. One day, Ogre attacks, knocking Jin unconscious. He wakes up with his village burnt down and his mother missing. When he awakes, Jin comes face to face with a devil. Driven by revenge, it possesses him and brands his left arm. Jin then seeks out his grandfather and proceeds to train under him with three years later Heihachi announcing the third Iron Fist tournament. The whole tournament is essentially a ploy so that Heihachi can use his grandson and other fighters to lure out Ogre. At some point in the tournament, Jin is knocked out by Paul Phoenix, who even eventually manages to triumph over Ogre. But little does Paul know that Ogre manages to achieve a second form known as True Ogre, which it manifests after absorbing Heihachi's Tekken Force. Jin ends up replacing Paul in the tournament and defeats True Ogre, causing it to completely dissolve, avenging his mother's death in the process. This moment is not as happy as expected though, as just seconds after winning the tournament, Heihachi shoots his grandson in the head. While the injury appeared fatal, it instead activates the devil gene, causing the devil to manifest once more. Jin, in his devil form, easily defeats Heihachi, smashing him through a temple wall in the process. Jin then sprouts feathery wings and flies away as his grandfather looks on from the ground. As we arrive at Tekken 4, we will learn of some of the events that would occur in the long time gap between the second and third King of Iron Fist tournament. In fact, directly after Heihachi dropped his son Kazuya into a volcano. Just a matter of days after this instance happened, a biotech firm known as the G Corporation would recover Kazuya's body. Using their advanced technology, they would bring him back to life, including reawakening his devil gene in the process. Together, the G Corporation and Kazuya investigate the Devil Gene's biomechanics with the intention of unlocking more power from the Devil Gene and control over the power of the Devil. 
Fast forwarding 20 years into the future, Heihachi's Tekken Force attacked the G Corporation, stealing research data with Kazuya also being a target for the attack. Now more driven than ever to enact his revenge, Kazuya enters the fourth Iron Fist tournament, despite being fully aware that it is being orchestrated to trap him. Kazuya enters hoping to meet his son Jin, but their match doesn't happen and Kazuya wins by default. This leads him to suspect that Heihachi is involved in his disappearance, so he sets out to do battle with his estranged father once again. After their fight, Heihachi leads Kazuya deep within the Mishima compound to show the whereabouts of Jin. Here a massive temple stands in the midst of a forest enshrouded in fog. The father-son duo enter the building with Heihachi revealing where he is holding Jin captive. Upon seeing Jin, Kazuya's eyes begin to glow red as the devil takes control of his body. The devil inside Kazuya confirms that his other half is inside Jin, with it revealing that when Heihachi nearly killed Kazuya 20 years ago, the devil inside him split in two, with this encounter reuniting both halves. The devil in Kazuya tries to absorb his half inside Jin, but it fails. The devil then makes the presumption that it is Jin's blood that is preventing the absorption, but soon discovers it is a result of Kazuya himself fighting back against the devil within. Kazuya wins the battle of wills, unifying the devil's power with his own, proclaiming he has complete control over it. Now as one, Kazuya challenges Jin, with Jin being able to defeat both Kazuya and Heihachi before sparing them and leaving. As for Tekken 5, the game's story occurs literally moments after Tekken 4's one concludes, with Kazuya and Heihachi still being present in the temple. The G Corporation's helicopters approach and deploy Jack 4 machines. Heihachi and Kazuya battle them together until Kazuya escapes, leaving his father for dead. One Jack holds Heihachi down while one activates a detonator, exploding, seeming that it appears that Heihachi is finally dead. This was all witnessed by Raven, a mysterious ninja clad in black who relays the incident to their superiors. Heihachi's death is reported all over the world, and somebody else from the shadows takes over his sinister company. Just two months into this new era, the fifth King of Iron Fist tournament is announced. When the tournament takes place, Kazuya encounters Raven, who he defeats, then interrogates the information. Kazuya learns that the G Corporation betrayed him, but more importantly, something awakened beneath the temple. Kazuya soon realises that this mysterious force is his grandfather, Jinpachi Mishima, who Heihachi defeated in a coup 40 years before. Jinpachi manages to escape the temple as a vengeful spirit during the Jack attack. During the tournament, Jin does battle with his great-grandfather Jinpachi, managing to defeat him, dissolving him into dust. With this victory won, Jin finally becomes head of the Mishima Zaibatsu himself, ushering in a new era for the family business. Moving along to Tekken 6, Jin uses the company's vast resources to declare independence, becoming a global superpower, severing national ties and declaring war against all other nations the following year. Kazuya, since completely unifying his devil form, is more consumed by evil than ever, and after taking over the G Corporation has killed all the traitors within. He now looks to take over the world himself, under the pretense that he is saving it from Jin's world war. Knowing that his father is after him, Jin announces the 6th Iron Fist tournament, so they can try and settle the most convoluted family feud in gaming history once more. During the war, the leader of Tekken Force, named Lars Anderson, rebels from the army, so the rest of Mishima Zaibatsu look to kill him. Speaking of convoluted family feuds, we soon learn that Lars is Heihachi's illegitimate son, making me question whether this whole mess would have more easily been resolved on an episode of Jerry Springer. It certainly would have been easier than throwing people into volcanoes. Lars wants to take Mishima Zaibatsu from Jin's hands. Essentially, he is the Tekken version of Scar from The Lion King. As other nonsense progresses, Lars confronts his half-brother Kazuya in the chamber of an ancient temple in Egypt, where a demonic monster known as Azazel is bound. Due to the demon having some sort of connection to the devil, it awakens. As Kazuya escapes, Lars alongside Raven seemingly defeat it. Later, Jin admits his reason for launching the war was to awaken Azazel, as it can only take a physical form through the negative energies of the world. Destroying Azazel would see Jin free himself from the devil gene in his body. Jin reveals that only those who have the devil gene can actually defeat the demon. Jin confronts and attacks the revived Azazel, sending them both plummeting to the desert. 
At the end of Tekken 6's story, Raven unearths Jin's body and notes that the Devil Mark is still on his arm. As Azel may apparently be the origin of the Devil Gene, though defeating it did not remove the Gene, as Jin had hoped. As we progress through the Tekken timeline, one thing is clear, and that is although Kazuya and Jin both carry the Devil Gene, Heihachi does not, thus meaning that it must have come from Kazuya's mother's side. As we progress into Tekken 7, that is exactly what is revealed, as it came from Kazuya's mother, Kazumi. Kazumi Mishima, the wife of Heihachi Mishima, is well versed in Hachijo Karate. She was childhood friends with her husband Heihachi, and eventually they fell in love. Through their love, they birthed a healthy young boy. Fast forward a few years later, Heihachi would become the head of a huge organization called the Mishima Zaibatsu with plans to conquer the world. Kazumi loved Heihachi unconditionally, but at the same time he was beginning to feel dangerous. In this state, Heihachi threw the world into war, and Kazumi took it upon herself to stop him. Now if you watched my last video, you will be aware that this is where one of the craziest plot twists in video game history occurs, with a character entering Kazuya's story through a completely different franchise. It transpires that a long time ago, that at some point, completely out of nowhere, Kazumi found an injured Akuma from the Street Fighter series. She tended his wounds, and desiring to repay his debt to her, Akuma offered to help Kazumi. Kazumi asked him to eliminate Heihachi, and later, Kazuya, should she fail, and should Kazuya walk the same path as Heihachi. The history of the six previous mainline Tekken games very much show us that Kazuya would indeed walk the wrong path leading to the story of Tekken 7, which heavily involves the master of the Dark Hado. Inevitably, Akuma manages to confront Heihachi with the pair doing battle, however, unfortunately, it is interrupted by a Jack-6 army who was sent by Kazuya. This leads to a team-up whereby the duo destroy the army together. Following the battle, Akuma reveals to Heihachi that he was sent by his estranged wife to kill both him and his son, which just results in Heihachi asking him why it has taken him so long to fulfil such a promise. Akuma simply replies he was waiting for Heihachi to become stronger. The two then proceed to fight once more with Akuma emerging victorious, destroying the dojo and seemingly murdering Heihachi in the process. As Akuma's quest continues, he arrives at the top of the G Corporation Tower to take on and kill Kazuya. With Akuma overpowering Heihachi's son, this results in him quickly resulting to taking his devil form, but the fight is soon interrupted by Heihachi, leading us to learn that he had previously faked his own death. Heihachi has been broadcasting Kazuya's devil transformation to the entire world, thus exposing his dark secret. Heihachi then proceeds to fire a powerful laser from a satellite in space, destroying the tower, but Kazuya is not killed. Despite surviving the explosion, the public turn against both Kazuya and the G Corporation due to learning of his devil form, but Kazuya is soon able to reverse the tide of public outrage after he uses his devil blaster to shoot Heihachi's satellite from the sky, causing it to tumble to earth, wiping out an entire city. Through this action, the world then believed that Heihachi lost control of his own satellite, so support swings back in Kazuya's favour, leading to an eventual rematch between father and son. Inside a volcano, the two fight each other to death, exchanging blow after blow. Ultimately, Kazuya finally manages to kill his father, stopping his heart with one deadly blow to the chest. Following this, he picks up his father's corpse, then tosses him into the volcanic magma below. Speaking of those still left standing, Akuma returns and confronts Kazuya once more, resulting in them taking part in a heated battle once again. Deadlocked, Kazuya fires a Devil Blaster at Akuma's Hadouken, leading to a collision so powerful that all of the pair's surroundings are destroyed, bringing Tekken 7 to a conclusion. Now, looking at Tekken's previous history, it seems pretty clear really that neither Heihachi or Kazuya are gone for good, as these two are like bad turds and tend to never flush away for good. Outside of the main Tekken canon, Devil would also appear in a number of other Tekken games, including both the Tekken Tag Tournament games, Namco Cross Capcom, Tekken Revolution, Project Cross Zone 2, and Fist of the North Star Legends Revive. In fact, he has even fairly recently appeared in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, a game which features a reveal trailer with Kazuya rather hilariously throwing loads of iconic Nintendo characters off the side of a cliff. The character's legacy has come a long way since his cheesy cliff throwing 1996 animation, even if throwing Kirby over a cliff is less effective than when he did it to his father. The Devil Transformation in Smash Bros. functions as part of Kazuya's moveset, and further emphasises how iconic this terrifying transformation has become. All in all, Kazuya's Devil form is an iconic and powerful one, and certainly one of the most recognisable and intimidating in all of fighting games. I hope by presenting this video to you today, the history of Devil Kazuya and all of his dysfunctional family members is a little more clear to you. 
Sons, fathers, mothers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, stepbrothers and half-brothers, there is a lot to digest. But no one can deny that this crazy storytelling doesn't add to Tekken's charm. Anyway, if you enjoyed this one, don't, don't, don't forget to subscribe. It really, really helps me make these things. And let me know down below which fighting game character you would like to see me cover in depth on here next. Now check out my upload on why this M. Bison ripoff was censored. Yeah. Cheerio.